Konnichiwa. Today, I'm afraid I don't have any reindeer for you, but I do have a few deer. We're going to talk about the word shika, which, as you probably know, means deer. But there's another shika element in Japanese, which is a particle, and which has a rather unusual effect on the structure of sentences. So we're going to look into that effect. One of my commenters reminded me of a rather charming Japanese wordplay. Nara, nara, shika, shika, shikarare nai. And in natural English, we would translate this as, in nara, only the deer gets scolded. It's useful to know here that Nara in the Kansai region is famous for its deer. People go to Nara to see the deer. And for other things, it's a lovely historical city. Strictly, Nara Nara doesn't mean in Nara. It means if it's Nara, or more naturally, in the case of Nara. But what does the rest of the structure mean? This is what my commenter was really asking. The question was, what is the a car of this sentence? Does it have a zero a car somewhere? Or does it even have an a car at all? What is the a car of a sentence like this? Now the problem is partly that shika has an unusual effect on the sentence structure, but it's also that the receptive helper is used here, which makes it look a bit more complicated than it is. So let's start off with a very simple shika sentence. Sakura shika inai. In natural English we translate this as there's nobody here but sakura. So what's shika doing here? Shika does two things in a sentence like this. It knocks out the ga particle just like ka. So this isn't something that we're not already familiar with. When you have ka in a sentence where there would also be a ga, we never say ga ka or ka ga ka displaces ga, but the ga is still logically there. That's what shika also does. But the other thing shika does is a little bit more unusual. I don't know if you've ever used Photoshop, but in Photoshop you can invert a selection. What happens is that you select an object, you press the key combination to invert that selection, and what happens is that everything outside of that object is selected. The object is the only thing there now that isn't selected. This is exactly what shika does. While ga, you might say, selects an object, a noun, and marks it as the a car, the subject of the sentence, shika selects that noun, inverts the selection, and marks that as the a car of the sentence. So everything other than that selected noun is now the a car of the sentence. So, Sakura Shika Inai literally means everyone other than Sakura is not here. In the dear sentence, which looks a little more complicated, it's exactly the same thing. Nara Nara Shika Shika Shikarare Nai. If it's Nara, everything other than the dear are not scolded. So again, we're selecting the dear, inverting the selection to everything other than the dear, and then that becomes the a car of the sentence, which is not scolded. Now there's also an implicit relevance clause in this. So when we say Sakura Shika Inai, we don't mean there's nothing here but Sakura, no trees, no bushes, no flying saucers. We mean there's nobody here but Sakura. Now the Inai partly tells us that, but it isn't just that, because it also doesn't mean that there are no bunny rabbits here, there are no birds, there are no capybara. Did I pronounce that right? So shika inverts the selection, but it's also what you might call a smart invert. It selects for relevance. However, in some shika sentences there is actually a ga marked subject, so what's going on here? Let's take a look at one. Suppose we say taoru ga ichimai shika arimasen. Again, in natural English, there's only one towel here. The ga marked subject is towel or towels. In Japanese, of course, there's no distinction between those two things. And as I explained in my lesson on counters, a counter in this kind of sentence is working as an adverb. It's telling us more about the engine of the sentence, the verb. 
So if we say Dorobaga Sangun Iru, we're saying robbers exist three personally. If we say Tauruga Ichimai Aru, we're saying Tau one platingly exists. If we say Tauruga Nimai Aru, we're saying Tauruga two platingly exists. So when we say Tauruga Ichimai Shika Arimasem, the subject is Taos. Then we have the counter, Ijimai, and that is marked by Shika. So we're selecting one flat thing, one towel, and then inverting the selection to all towels, not all flat things, because we've already marked the subject as towel. So we're inverting the counter, which is working adverbially, from one towel to every towel but that one towel. So we're saying towels, everything but one, not exists. In natural English, there's only one towel. And that's how what we might call the inverse selection structure of a shika sentence works. And I should just add at the end that there is a use of shika that's more colloquial, and this is when we say shika nai. Now in an ordinary shika sentence, obviously we just say kono furui kuruma shika nai, which means in natural English there's only this old car, is selecting the car, inverting the selection, all cars other than this old car non-exist. But we can also put that shikanai on the end of a logical clause or a verb standing in for a logical clause. Now this isn't strictly grammatical, but colloquially it often happens. So if you hear in an anime somebody saying Nigaru shikanai, they're saying you've got to run in natural English. What they're literally saying is we take this nigaru we mark it with shika so that what we're selecting is not nigaru, run, but everything else other than run. And again, the relevancy, smart selection comes in here. What we're really saying is every course of action other than running doesn't exist. Well, of course, it does exist. This is very colloquial. But as far as we're concerned, it doesn't exist. There's nothing for it but to run. In English, we might say, it's run or nothing. And again, that's ungrammatical, and for the same reason that the Japanese is ungrammatical, that run isn't a noun. But when that thing's coming after you, who cares about grammar? If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below, and I will answer as usual. I'd like to thank my gold Kokeshi patrons, my producer angels who make these videos possible, and all my patrons and supporters on Patreon and everywhere, and all of you watching. And to all of you, I want to say Merry Christmas! Have a wonderful, happy holiday. Thank you for supporting me this year, all of you, whether it's financial, with likes or comments, subscriptions. Thank you, all of you. Have a happy, peaceful, and blessed holiday season. I love you all. Kore kara mo. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Class dismissed.